Hi everyone, thank you very much for stopping by and for returning to the old world. Today we're having an overview of just what is Warhammer Fantasy Battles. What's the purpose behind this? Well, I know quite a few of my viewers, according to the Google Analytics, tend to be in their mid to late 20s. And I've also had some comments from people who didn't play the game Warhammer Fantasy when it was still being actively supported by Games Workshop. That being about, what, eight years ago now? Something like that. So I thought it'd be useful to provide a quick overview of what it is we're actually talking about. Now, fundamentally, Warhammer Fantasy Battle was a rank-and-flank tabletop fantasy war game. Armies made up of organised regiments moving around a battlefield, typically six foot by four foot, and supported by powerful characters ranging from mighty warriors, masterful mages, and learned engineers, all providing support to your army in different ways. Now, over the course of time, the role of characters changed. In some editions, known as the Hero Hammer editions, the powerful characters were incredibly powerful and really the army was a supporting cast to what the character was going to do by eighth edition that had changed and the ranks of the rank of file units were a lot more important although magic had become incredibly powerful now people's meta people the way the game was played varied through different areas but certainly in the areas I was playing at you had very large units of infantry backed by incredibly powerful wizards and if you didn't have the powerful wizard then you probably had a big problem because magic was super strong and for certain armies could be used really effectively with big ranks of ward infantry. Now, the game itself, Warhammer, grew out of the roleplay scene, really. And over time, the units became more organised, they grew in size. And to an extent, it became a little bit less generic. But at its heart, Warhammer fantasy has always been a relatively low fantasy, although with high fantasy elements, I suppose, um, game which has generic fantasy races going to its heart. You've got the undead, you've got orcs, you've got dwarves, you've got elves, goblins, all that sort of thing. So it needed something else to mark it apart. Now this is the 40th anniversary of Warhammer fantasy, which is partly why people were so convinced that Warhammer Old World was going to be released this year. Now, there are a lot of generic fantasy war games out there now. Certainly, I think really since Mantic brought out their Kings of War game, there's been a bit more interest from other parties in bringing out games to rival Warhammer. Made easier for them, of course, because eight years ago, Games Workshop stopped supporting their rank and flank Warhammer product and moved to... Age of Sigma, which is a little bit more skirmishy, it's it's a different feel to the game. Uh, albeit, I'll put my hands up to this, not one I'm massively familiar with. What marks Warhammer Fantasy apart, though, from all these games is the fact it's had 40 years of background, lore development, and a number of very, very talented authors have written pieces both for the army books but also standalone novels over the years which has been really useful in bringing the world of Warhammer to life and as I say I think re this is really really important in setting the game apart because even when the rules aren't at their best and maybe the games aren't as good as they could be you're still part of this really immersive landscape which other games, quite frankly, I don't think offer in the same way. So what is Warhammer the Old World? What are we getting so excited about? Well, you, you may well have seen stuff talking about the fact that this is going to be Warhammer, but based 
in the past. And there's been quite a lot of speculation in, until quite recently as to when in the law the new game is going to be set. And it looks like it's going to be set just before an event called the Great War Against Chaos. In a period dominated certainly from one of the major human races, the Empire, um, it's known as the time of the Three Emperors. And this is a several hundred year long piece, period of time where you had multiple claimants to the throne, so rife with civil war. And actually, if you look at what's going on in the law around this sort of time frame, there's actually there's a lot happening and it's it's quite interesting and it's a good opportunity to start writing your own stories. Now, as special name characters and the like, you can't do that with those, but if your own generic character that you're going to be able to use out of whatever book gets released, then yeah, some really good opportunities there. As Workshop have also said that Warhammer Old World is going to be based on the best bits of previous editions. Now, exactly what that means, we don't know. There's been a lot of some rumour around it being based on the seventh ed, um, which was around what 10 12 years ago now, I guess. And it was a solid rule set, but suffered very much from power creep. So, as more and more army books got released, armies got more and more powerful to the extent that there was really two or three armies, certainly only a handful of viable lists that you could take without expecting to get smashed off the table without really achieving anything. But taking out power creep then, yep, seventh ed is fairly solid and then if you apply the popular slash good bits of other editions then yeah I think we can be hopeful that there's going to be a fairly solid gaming system there. Um, for example, I, you know, with risk of wish listing I'd like to see things like step up so the charge isn't quite as important, but get rid of things like the horde rule and the rules in from 8th edition that led to armies having absolutely huge units which basically made it inaccessible to, to new players and incredibly expensive and quite frankly tedious to start a new army. There you have it, a overview of what is Warhammer Fantasy, rank and flank, war game, generic fantasy, a huge range of different races and cre of creatures that you could build armies from and importantly a really developed story that really sat at the heart of everything Warhammer for me was about. I hope you found this useful if you have and you've been enjoying the video content today do consider dropping a, a like and subscribe it's all really helpful otherwise I am returned to the old world have a great day